Hello all, so if you remember, in the last few videos, we have created a question document that looks just like this. So we've got space for students to put their answers in, we've customised the question numbers and question parts, uh, and we've also got our own little customised header and footer with a little marking box down here. Now what we're going to move on to in the next few videos is how to create our own title page. Now this is really important if you're creating an exam because you need a completely separate front page which students will read when they first come into their exam um, with the title of the exam on, space for students to put their name and their student ID, and there'll also be instructions for how to complete the exam as well. Now obviously if you're just using these series of videos to create worksheets, that's okay. I still think there's something in there for you because a lot of the techniques that I'm going to show you in the next few videos, you can use to maybe just put a little space at the top, a little box at the top where students could put their name and perhaps their class and perhaps the date or something on there as well. Okay. So anyway, let's first of all start by creating a nice front page. So I guess first things first, we need to move this onto the second page. So all this first questions, which currently appears on page one, need to move it to page two. So the way to do that is to come down to in between where it says begin T color box and begin document. Okay. Remember this begin T color box would basically put a box around every single page. Now, obviously if you didn't want that on the first page and I personally don't, I'm going to put a new page before that. If you did, you'd put a new page after that and you'd put all your title page after this. Okay. So I'm just going to go new page. Uh, now at the moment, because LaTeX has got sort of a, a, a formatting command built in, that means that if there's a lot of blank space, it will try and reformat that efficiently for you. So at the moment, uh, nothing will happen if I recompile. So I just need to put some filler text in. So I'm just gonna go, here is my first page. In fact, I guess just because it's good practice, I should also say here um, a little comment. So this is my title page, okay? And then this will be my uh, question document. Okay, good. So then that kind of separates this out a little bit more. Okay, now if I click recompile, what will happen is that this will move on to the second page. There'll just be a document, a little bit of text on top. It says, here's my first page. There'll be my header and my footer will still be here. Okay, so there we are. Okay, so there is a blank page. The questions have moved to the second page. There's, here's my first page. And like I say, there's my header and there's my footer. Now, I don't actually want this header and footer still here on my first page. And this is why it makes sense to define the header and the footer separately for the first page than for the rest of the documents as well. Because now all I need to do in order to get rid of this header and footer for the first page is just delete everything in my header and footer section of the code, which corresponds to the first page. Okay, so that's all gone. So now if I click recompile, it'll just be a blank page, just with here is my first page up here at the top. Okay, like so. Okay, but notice that it hasn't affected anything which happens on the second or third or for actually for the rest of the document at all. Okay, so let's actually make a start on this first page then. So first things first, I'm just going to create a box at the top of the page which has my logo in the middle. So I'm going to get rid of here is my first page and I'm going to do that by creating a T color box. So I'm going to go begin, T color box, and notice that Overleaf has learned this now because I've used this command a couple of times. So it will automatically begin and end a T color box if I click enter. Now I'm going to go to the begin T color box. I'm just going to put a few parameters in here. Okay. So the first parameter, I'm just going to change the background color. So the coal back. Okay. And I'm just going to change that to white. I'm also going to change the color of the frame. So coal frame. And I'm going to change that to black. And you notice that before, when I defined a T color box, I had rounded corners. And I can absolutely type the same thing here, so rounded corners again. Um, but actually what I'm going to do is define the rounded corners in a slightly more controllable way by actually defining the radius of that arc that I want, okay? So I'm just going to go for a one millimeter arc in the corner, okay? Now, what am I actually going to put here? Well, I want to actually have my logo in the middle. So first things first, I want to put it in the middle. So I'm going to go begin and end center. Oops, make sure you use curly brackets. And it's American English as well, so it's center spelt with the ER at the end. And if you remember how to include an image into your document, I'm actually just gonna include this image up here, which is the image header.png, which I uploaded last time. Of course, if you wanted to upload a brand new document, you could click upload, then you can either drag or select from your computer, okay? But I'm just gonna use that one. So I'm gonna go include graphics. And if you remember, the first set of square brackets is how you define your height or your width or your scale. So I'm gonna go the width, uh, I'm gonna make it 40% of the text width. And obviously this will be different for your image as you choose. Um, and I'm just gonna use the image header, so I'm gonna put that in my curly brackets. If I start typing image, it'll bring up the uh, images that I already have uploaded into this session. So I'm just gonna click this one, which is image header. Now if I click recompile, there will be a box at the top of the screen with my image in the middle, like so. Okay, so I think this starts to look quite good. 
Okay, so what else do I actually want to have in this box here? Well, I think it would be quite nice for students to be able to put their name and their student ID here. Okay, so I'm just going to go boldface font and I'm going to put name. Okay, and actually on a new line. So if you want to define a new line in LaTeX, you actually have to specify, I want a new line here. Okay, so the way to do that is a couple of ways. I could either type backslash new line. Okay, or quicker, I could just type two backslashes and that will work nicely. Okay, and then the second line, I'm going to put my student, oops, student ID. Okay, cool. So now if I click recompile, it will have the same box as before, but now I'll have name and student ID underneath, like so. Okay, fine. Um, all right, well, look, actually what would be quite nice if I have another box within this, which has a box around the name and the box around the student ID. I think that'll just help to separate things out a little bit more. So I'm gonna have to put a T color box inside a T color box. Because you notice I've already got a T color box which has got my name and my student ID and my logo in. And I wanna put another T color box inside that to surround the name. So in order to do that, I need to use a TCB raster. So I'm gonna go begin, TCB raster, okay? And I'm gonna end the TCB raster after I've finished everything that I wanna put. So I'm gonna put, okay, student ID. So I'm gonna end the TCB raster here. And again, all that literally does, it just allows me to put T color boxes inside another T color box. Now I'm just gonna define a few parameters here. Again, you don't have to worry about what they are. You can just copy what I'm doing. But if you did wanna play around and get this looking exactly how you want it to look, to customize it, then by all means, go away and have a play. So the first thing I need to define is the number of columns that I want my T color boxes to take up, okay? So obviously if I wanted two T color boxes side by side, then I would define the number of columns to be two. Or if I wanted three side by side, I'd define the number of columns to be three. In this case, I'm happy just with the one. Okay, so I'll just define the number of columns to be one. Uh, I also wanted to define the raster column skip. Okay, so that would basically tell me how much to skip in between the columns. Well, I'm not skipping anything in between them, so I'll just put zero PT. Okay, I also want to tell LaTeX to raster them to be equal height. So I don't want different heights, oops, different heights. So I don't want different heights uh, columns. Uh, and I also want the color of each of these T color box to be white. Okay, so I can actually define it here rather than defining each T color box separately. And I'm also just gonna tell LaTeX that I don't want to skip anything before the T color boxes, okay? So obviously if I wanted to move it over slightly to the left, then I could change the skip down here. So okay, I'm actually gonna put a T color box around each of these things. So I'm gonna put two T color boxes. So I'll just create my T color box here. So begin T color box and I'm gonna end the T color box after my name. Okay, and actually because I've defined many of my uh, parameters already in the TCB raster, the only thing that I'm actually gonna define here is the color of the title. So I'm just gonna put in square brackets, cold title, and I'm just gonna do that as black, okay? Now obviously if I wanted to change that to gray or red or something else, and I could do that here. Okay, let's recompile and see what that looks like. It should effectively be a new box around the name. Okay, now you notice that when I define, when I create this box, there's actually a new space, a new line underneath here, which I don't necessarily want. Reason being is I've told LaTeX to create a new line after name. So if I get rid of that, then if I recompile, then basically it'll just be a nice box which fits neatly around the name. Okay, like so. Okay, we'll worry about the spacing in a little bit. Okay, fine. Um, I'm actually just gonna put another T color box around um, the second one then, so begin. T color box around the student ID. Okay, and in fact, I'll just copy that up here, like so. Okay, fine, and I'm also just gonna define the same parameters, which is the color of the title. I want that to be black, don't I? Okay, right, so now if I recompile, you'll basically see two T color boxes, one on top of the other, one surrounding the name, one surrounding the student ID, like that, okay? Now in actual fact, just because this code is already getting slightly messy, um, I might at a later date actually wanna change these two details here. So I think it's really good practice because I'm trying to create a template that I don't have to dig through every single time just to change something like the name. I'm gonna change that to be a new command. So I'll come right to the very top where I've already defined my commands for my uh, module code and my paper title. And I'll just do a couple of new commands. So the first one will be the first detail that I wanna fill in. So I'll call it depth fill A. Uh, and this, in this case, will just be the name. In fact, I'm gonna make the name lowercase. So I've changed my mind, I'll change it from lowercase to uppercase. And I'll also define a new command around depth fill B. 
and this will be for the moment student ID. And again, I'll make this lowercase. All right, cool. So now if I click, re oh no, I didn't need to change it down here as well now. So I'll change name to debt fill A and I'll change student ID to debt fill B. So now if I click recompile, then that will just make sure that the name and the student ID, it makes it really easy to change just up here. Okay, fine. Now, actually, I think the name and the student ID, because I've changed it to lowercase, uh, that's a little bit too small now. So I'm just going to change the sizing of this. Uh, I'm going to begin and enlarge. Okay, so I'm going to large it. So begin large. And obviously, I need to end large as well. So I'm doing this around where I've got my first detail. And I'll also do the same down here to make it the same height. And if you're looking for different sizes, which you can change, uh, there's like large, there's large with a capital L, there's huge as well. You can even do small and things like that. I mean, the best way of finding out all these different sizes is just to Google it, okay? Stick it into Google and you will find it within a couple of, uh, couple of seconds. Okay, fine. So this now starts to look slightly better after it's recompiled. Yeah, I think that looks slightly better, okay? So what could I do next? Well, actually, what would be quite nice if I could actually separate these boxes out from what I've already got before. I think it will make it look slightly more professional. So I'm just gonna change the color of the bigger T color box to be something else. That's really easy, because you notice this command up here, so this is where I begin my T color box for my main one around the outside. And you notice that I've defined the coal back to be white, so the background color to be white. So what I'm just gonna quickly do is come into RGB color picker, Okay, and I'm just going to choose something fairly light. I don't want something too dark. So maybe 240. I think that color will look quite nice. So I'm just going to go up here to where I've defined a color. Uh, where is it? Here it is. Okay, so I've already got washout gray up here. I'm just going to put here define color. And I'm just going to call it light gray. Okay, you can call it whatever you like. And it was RGB, wasn't it? It wasn't hex or uh, CMYK. And it was 240. Okay, so 240, 240. Okay, so I'm just going to change this white to be light gray. Now if I click recompile, that background should just become light gray and I think it will separate it out a little bit more. Yeah, okay, I think that starts to look nice.